Alrighty, Shabbat Shalom, Ms. Bacada, is Mori Medea, Yahoo, Ben Yashrael. I want to welcome you to another live broadcast of Living Branch. And I pray that you've had a prosperous week and the Father has truly um, blessed you and shown you favor. So we're continuing with our corruption series. So today we're going to kind of I don't know if it's called taking a different approach, but we're going to look at a story, and this involves the really the uh, first, if you would call family, and the dynamics of a a brother and or brothers. So we want to look at that, and we want to see. You know what's working what's operating because if we remember there's nothing new under the Sun and what we have to see is some of these things same things operate today so without further ado let me grab my prayer shawl and we're going to commence to pray. All right, Baruch Hashem Yehuda Lehinu Malik Ha'alam. Father, I give you praise, honor, and esteem. And I'm asking you, Father, to give us insight to help us to understand the workings and operations of the enemy. And I pray, Father, that this lesson will bring to light some of the things that we need to make sure that we have addressed in our lives and we have taken care of so that we can be prepared for when you come. Father, we say, Todah for all of your favor and mercy you've shown us. We are undeserving because of our sins, our iniquities, and our transgressions. Blot them out before you. We acknowledge them. We ask for forgiveness. We ask you to restore us Father, to the covenant of Abraham, Yitzhak, Yaakov, restore us to our land. We acknowledge the sins and transgressions and iniquities of our forefathers, how they were wayward. We were wayward, but ask, we are asking for your mercy, Father, to show, show us the way. Help us to walk on the path of righteousness and help us to be more like you. We thank you, Father. We say Todah Rabbah as we go through this lesson. And we give you all praise, honor, and esteem in the name of Messiah Yahusha. Hallel to Yahuwah. Amen. All righty, Ms. Bakai. Let's see what we working with. Okay. So I'm sure most of you are very familiar with the story of Cain and Abel. So it won't be new material. But what we want to do is try to peel back some of the layers so that you can uh, get a a different perspective and see how it's really working. So let's, let's go here. So we'll come back to this. Let's go to the text. Close out some of these windows. Okay, and hopefully we've made this large enough so that we can see. Now I have three versions here. I have the King James here. I have right here is the um, Septuagint. Then I have ESV. I just put them side by side just just for to see we're going to read from the King James but if but if you know it sounds if we will look over at the other two translations now Adam knew Eva Chua or Chawa his wife and she conceived and bare Cain or Cain and said, I have gotten a man from Yahuwah. 
and she again bare his brother Abel, a Habel. And Abel was a keeper of the sheep. Now, notice here that the order changes. First it talks about Cain, he's the firstborn, then Abel. But then the order changes when we get here to what they do. Now, you have to ask yourself, and we're going to look at Scripture, was both of these acceptable? Okay, do we have references that they can bring offerings from these sources? And we'll look at that shortly. Okay, and it says, Abel was a keeper of sheep. But Cain a tiller of the ground. Okay, and as we go on, in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering. Okay. A mink ha unto Yahuwah. And Abel. He also brought the firstling of his flock of the fat thereof. And Yahuwah had respect unto Abel and to his offering, but unto Cain and his offering he had not respect. Okay, so pretty much they read the same as here they're reading gifts in the Septuagint. Um, and it says, And Cain and his sacrifice. He regarded not. Now here, and Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. Okay, now you'll find a, a variation here. And Cain was exceedingly sorrowful, and his countenance fell. Or when you go over here, so Cain was very angry, and his face fell. Okay, we'll, we'll come back and revisit that. And Yahuwah said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? And why is thy countenance fallen? Now, this is, I think, is key. If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. So let's just read what it says um, in the Septuagint. Has thou not sinned if thou has not brought it rightly, but not rightly divideth it? Okay, and this, this might make a little more sense when we start talking. Be still. To thee shall be his submission, and thou shalt rule over him. Okay, now here, um, this is the ESV. If you do well, will you not be accepted? If you do not do well, sin crouching is crouching at the door. Its desire is contrary to you, but you must rule over it. So we'll we'll discuss that portion. Okay, now this is where for some reason the Masoretic text leaves out a portion here. And Cain talked with his brother with Abel his brother. And it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him. Now look here in the Septuagint. Okay, you don't see it in the ESV because most of these are going to be translated from the Masoretic. So the Septuagint was translated from an older text than the Masoretic text. So, and it says, Cain said to Abel, his brother, let us go out into the plain. And it came to pass that when they were in the plain, Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. Okay, so 
kind of a different reading. It was a, a suggestion, okay, or, or told them, hey, let's go out here to the field. <laughs> so we have to figure out, was there a motive behind what was being, you know, uh, why he asked him to go to the plain or the field? And we'll come back to that. So we're kind of reading through the text first. And Yahuwah said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Now was he telling the truth? Okay. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, What has thy done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. And now art thou cursed from the earth. Now, let's see, 11. And now art thou cursed from the earth. So now he is cursed. Now are you cursed from the earth. Which has opened her mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand when you tillest the ground it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength a fugitive and a vagabond fugitive that, that means a wanderer to shape and this will this will be a characteristic we'll see uh, and a vagabond to move to and fro. I did a series on to and fro. How this right here becomes the characteristic of Hasatan. He goes to and fro in the earth. And it's, the series is still out there on YouTube. If you want to look at it. we did. I did that a couple years back. Shall thou be in the earth? Cain said unto Yahuwah. My punishment is greater than I can bear. Now, if you remember, for us to be redeemed in uh, when it talks about it in Leviticus, we have to accept our punishment. Now, notice his words here. My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face. Um, thou hast driven me out this day from from the face of the earth and from the face, thy face shall I be hid. And I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth. And it shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me. And Yahuwah said unto him, Therefore whosoever slave came, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And Yahuwah set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. And Cain went out from the presence of Yahuwah and dwelt in the land of Nod. That's the, and when you look this up, it's a land of, it's really a land of wondering. Um, I have some other uh, dictionaries that give a little more information. On the east of Eden, and Cain knew his wife and conceived and bare Enoch, and he built a city and called the name of the city after his son Hanak or Enoch. Okay, and so let's go back all the way to the beginning of this text. Okay, let's go over to our PowerPoint. Hopefully it'll act right this week. So the first thing we want to do is address the offerings. Okay. And to make sure to see if their offerings are in check with what is written. Okay. We see first fruit is mentioned. And it's also mentioned in Proverbs about bringing the first fruit of your increase. Okay. The festival of harvest, the first fruit of thy labor, which thou hast sown in the ground. So he was a worker of the ground. So this seems to be okay. The 
festival of in gathering, which is in the end uh, of the year, thou has gathered in thy labor of the fields. Okay, and then there are a lot of references, but I just chose two. Uh, Leviticus 2.14, and if thou offer a meat offering, a better translation because when you think of meat there, you're going to think flesh, but it's not flesh. Uh, it's a grain offering of the first fruit of Yahuwah, which shall all, uh, thou, um, Yahuwah, you shall offer for a meat uh, or grain offering of thy first fruit. Notice what it says, green ears of corn dried by the fire, even corn beating out of full ears. So when we look here, we do not see the word first fruit anywhere in the text of Genesis 4, 3 for Cain. Okay. So he, when he brought his offering, his offering, he was an offering of fruit, but it wasn't the stipulation first fruit, which is, which is, um, Be cool, be cool, which is the first talking about first fruit. All we see for Cain is in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto Yahuwah. We do not see any indication that it was a first fruit, which is what we have later on that was written to tell us what it must be first fruit so in the text um let's go back over to the text when you're looking down here and you who was talking to him one of the texts now look here has thou not sinned if thou has brought it rightly but not rightly divideth it so he it's possible and this is just me talking that when he divided it up he kept the first fruit for himself possibility but we know that he didn't bring the first fruits to the father this we know of a surety okay so let's go back to our powerpoint now let's look at Abel's offering. Okay, firstly, okay, let's look and see if that concept is anywhere in Scripture. That thou shalt set apart unto you, Yahuwah, all that openeth the matrix, and every firstling, or that's the firstborn, that cometh out of a beast which thou hast, the male shall be Yahuwah's. And every firstling of the donkey thou shalt redeem with a lamb. And if thou wilt not redeem it, thou shalt break his neck. And all the firstborn of man among thy children shall be redeemed. Okay, so this word firstling, okay, is pit ra. Okay, and it's basically what comes out the womb first belongs to Yahuwah. Now let's see if. Abel has this in his um, verse. Okay, look here. Genesis 4, 4. And Abel, he also brought of the firstling of his flock and of the fat thereof. And Yahuwah had respect unto Abel, Habel, and to his offering. So our first problem is, that we run into in this text is obedience. So we we see now there's a spirit of disobedience operating. And if you've been in some of my lessons, the spirit of disobedience will say that it's been obedient. When it has not. It'll have some of the elements of obedience. 
But the core of it is not obedience working. And this is one of the things that's troubling um, for us or for Israel is the subject of obedience because many of, of our people have an element of obedience but they're not operating in total obedience. You know, they might do certain things you see in scripture but then the core has rejected saying I don't have to do that that's not necessary I'm sure you've heard this talk before so when I analyze this and what the father has revealed to me is the first spirit that we see operating here is a spirit of disobedience now what you will see once when you have one spirit working you're going to find other spirits will follow suit. And it brings in other things. So when you operate in disobedience, you can guarantee some other spirits that are worse than disobedience are going to start knocking at your door. It would, and when I say worse, it's going to elevate the disobedience to a new, new level. And we've got to focus. I mean, I, 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 when I talk to people, the first thing I'm, I'm looking for is to see if they have an obedient spirit. And you can, you can look at what they say. You can look at what they do. And it will forecast. What's happening with them? What are they operating in? And you're going to see this progressively. Now notice, after the disobedience, because he felt that it should have been accepted because he brought uh, the element, uh, a element, of what he was supposed to. So he brought the fruit, but he didn't bring the core element, which was the first fruit, as opposed to his brother, who not only brought the firstling, it says that he brought the fat thereof. So the brother took his obedience to a whole new level because we, when we read in scripture about fat, the fat belongs to Yahuwah too. So not only did he bring that offering, he brought, he brought the fat thereof. So this is what we're up against. Now watch how progressively this works. Okay. When his offering, and you'll see this in people all the time, when, when, what they do is not accepted or acceptable. They get mad. They get upset. And now sin here is at the door. That disobedience becomes a breeding ground. It's just like putting rotten fruit out. You wonder where stuff come from. And the next thing you know, you got fruit flies. And then you got infestation. And this is how this work if you don't address it. So he didn't address his disobedience. Nor did he address his feeling of anger. Or being upset. He had no reason to be upset with his brother. But when these spirits start operating. You might as well say that this is just like WWF. They're going to start tag teaming. And they will tag team, tag team. And before you know it, you have done something that you regret. It just keeps elevating. And so he did not 
address the sin nor the anger. And how many of us have let things just pass and go? We hold it, we harbor it. We 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 become, you know, we should be on um, hodlers or whatever that show is called, where they just hold stuff. And next thing you know, you got a, just a house full of mess that's not really suitable for anyone. Now, what's interesting, I, I want you to see a progression here. Disobedience, then anger was anger became a breeding ground. Now, after that we see another interesting thing. Sin goes undercover. This is what I call it. Let us, which is only right here, is only in Septuagint. Is in, well, it's in the Septuagint. Let us go out into the plain. And it came to pass when they were in the plain, Cain rose up against his brother Abel and slew him. Okay, he slew him. Now what caused, you see this, look at this word here. Harag. To smite with deadly intent. Destroy, hand out, kill, murder, put to death. He rose up against him. Uh, Kum. And you, you have to think, what rises? Anger, heat. That's why, that's why when uh, you deal with the, the anger, you're dealing with the nose. He, he was inflamed. And, and this is progression. Remember we had disobedience. We have anger. Now we have deception working. And that's what I mean by. Sin goes undercover. He takes him. Now notice in, in scripture. That if you have two or three witnesses and you murder someone that what happens you're stoned you're killed but if there are no witnesses then you go to a city of refuge and you wait for your day of vindication because there are no witnesses because you can't put someone to death on the mouth of one witness so notice let us go to the to the plain. Then in the plain, there were no witnesses, nobody there. And see, this is how sin progresses in people. Once certain things take hold in a person, disobedience, anger, now that sin goes undercover. That's where you have people going, spreading, uh, tail bearing. People causing division, going, talking to other people, spreading false doctrines because they're, they think their doctrine is right as opposed to you, that you got it all wrong. So they won't come and make their case. They go and start talking to, pulling people to the side individually. And what they're seeking out, they're seeking out those that are weak-minded, that are following. So, oh, I see what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, I, I see that. So they can build the following. Or they're doing things, you know, to kill or hurt where it can't be seen. There's no witnesses. So no one can come back. They'll plant a seed. That's how, this, this is how evil this is is this can be they'll go plant a seed 
and make sure that there's no tracks showing them planting the seed. That way when it comes back, they can just look around like, oh man, I wonder who did that. That they'll they'll be sitting there saying it. Oh, that is just so wicked. I wonder who did that when they know that it was them that did it. Miss Bacar, we've got to get our wits about us. We've got to start as first John four, one through four. Try the spirits to see whether they are of Elohim. There are a lot of people sowing discord. They won't go to the person. We've brought this up before. But they'll, they'll circumvent and try to do their little dirty work planting seeds uh, on people. And then they have no courage to go to them. This is how this undercover stuff works. They don't want to be traced back. This is how... The, and even even do you remember the parable of the sower? I mean, oh, well, it was another parable where the, they sowed the seed at night, and the servant said, "Hey, this is the marks of an enemy." So we, we've got to see this progression. Then, when they are where there are no witnesses, nobody can accuse them of the evil that they are doing. They commit the act. He rose up. He slew his brother. But see, one thing you cannot hide from, and that's Yahuwah Elohim. Make sure I don't need to go back over to my slides. Oh, yeah, we'll, we'll work on that here in a second. All right. And Yahuwah came to Cain. Okay, do, do you do you not think Yahuwah knew where his brother was? But now he's testing the spirit of Cain. Where is his spirit? Where is he really at now? One question. Where is Abel thy brother? He said, I know not. Now you now you tell me this. Did he not know that this was Abel? His brother? You think he didn't know where he was? Yes, he knew. He knew exactly where he was. But he answered, and now he now he's not. This is not just answering me and you. He had the audacity to answer the Creator, saying, "I know not. Am I?" Then then he's going then he's going to get nasty with it. You know how people do. Once you catch them in their mess, you you can you can see how they operate. You can see their true spirit. Am I my brother's keeper? Hmm. So this is, we see right now the pillar of one of the pillars of Torah is how you treat others. And especially how you treat your brother. Now, I have to ask you, how many of us are getting an A plus on how we treat our brothers and sisters? Or are we still straddling the fence with a D? Or maybe some of us are getting an F. This is areas we have to work on. There's no if, ands, or buts. And he said, what has thou done? The voice of thy brothers, the voice of thy brother's blood, cry unto me from the ground. Now art thou cursed from the earth, which thou 
uh, which has opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shall thy be in the earth. So let's go over here. I want to talk about the children of disobedience because this is the core of where all this stuff starts. Disobedience. Okay. And I'm taking this from the Brit Hadashah because I, I think it gives us some good core on this. Ephesians 2 and 2. Wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world. According, now notice what you're doing. According to the prince of the power of the air. And the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Okay. That same spirit that started working in Cain. 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 Now is working in Israelites and Hebrews and people today. Same spirit. But they fall into the guys that they're doing right. But they don't have the core of what they need. They're doing some aspects right. But the core is not there. Children of disobedience. Ephesians 5, 6. Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of Elohim upon the children of disobedience. Now like Colossians 3, 5. Mortify therefore of your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate affections, evil com com cuptious, uh, covetedness, which is idolatry, for which things sate the wrath of Elohim cometh upon cometh on the children of disobedience. So let's talk about this disobedience. What did Yahuwah say in Deuteronomy 28, 15? But it shall come to pass, if thou shalt not hearken unto the voice of Yahuwah the Elohim to observe and to do all his commandments, his statutes, which I command thee this day. That all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Okay, so what happened? The disobedient was a breeding ground for anger. It says he, Cain was very wroth. His countenance fell. So all of this let down his guard. Where sin could just jump across the fence. Okay. Now I wanted to read some Brit Hadashah references. Or some New Testament references. Just to you know show that some of the writers in, were very on point. Hebrews 11.4 By faith Abel offered to Elohim a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain. Through which he was commended as righteous, Elohim commending him by accepting his gift. And though he, and through faith, though he died, he still speaks. Okay, first John 3 12. We should not be like Cain, who was of the evil one, murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his own deeds, his own deeds were righteous, and his brother—I mean, his own deeds were evil, and his brother's righteous. So you, you wonder why some people have vendettas against you, especially if you're trying to do. I'm not talking about you half living this thing, but I'm talking about you trying to live and do this thing. And people always got something to say. Then you got to start asking yourself and, and looking, you know, are they of the seed of Cain? What are they doing? You know, we're supposed to be a steam of the, uh, Yahoo and building one another up. But I said this to a good brother yesterday. 
People come to this walk saying they want to be righteous. They want to be all these other things. It's just like people going to the gym saying they want to lose weight. They don't want to put in the effort for what it takes to be righteous. They want to, they want to, um, how could you say, skate by. You no, know, if we're supposed to do 25, they'll do 10 and say, I'm tired and give out. <clears throat> People don't want to push themselves for righteousness. Just like, the, you know, they don't want to push themselves if you're overweight. If you burden down with sin, just like people are overweight coming to the gym. You've got to put in the work. You've got to eat right. You can't eat from every table. You've got to eat healthy. That means you've got to stay in the word of Elohim. You can't be going from teacher to teacher. Some of us, with whatever teachers, we got the flavor of the week for teachers. And that's about how our spirit is. It's a flavor of the week. We don't know what spirit we're going to get from you because of the tables you're eating from. And because of the people that you're letting influence you and talking, talk stuff into your spirit. I know I'm talking right. Somebody going to hear me. Woe to them, for they walked in the ways of Cain. Abandoning themselves for the sake of gain to Balaam, Balaam's era, <clears throat> and perished in Korah's rebellion. Okay, now I found some other references that I thought were very interesting. <clears throat> and, and I said references. Okay, Jubilee 2, 4, verse 2. In the first year... Of the third jubilee. Cain slew Abel. Because Elohim. Accepted the sacrifice of Abel. It did not accept. The sacrifice. The offering of Cain. So very interesting. Jubilee 4. 4. And Yahuwah reproved Cain. Because of Abel. Because he had slain him. He was made. He made him a fugitive. On the earth. Because of the blood of his brother he cursed him upon the earth okay then jubilee uh 4 13 at the close of this jubilee cain was killed interesting after him in the same year this is after uh adam died that's that's if you go back and read the text for his house fell upon him and he died in the midst of his house and that's what that's what sin would do to your house. It will collapse and and kill you. And he was killed by stones. For with a stone he had killed Abel. And by a stone was he killed in righteous judgment. I thought that was very interesting. Then we have uh, the apocalypse of Moses, two verse one. And after this, Adam and Eve were with one another and while they were sleeping Eve said to Adam her sovereign the Lord my sovereign my Lord Adam or Adam behold I have seen in a dream this night the blood of my son Amilabas who is styled Abel being poured into the mouth of Cain his brother and he went on drinking it without pity just very interesting. Apocalypse of Moses 2 verse 3. And Elohim said to uh, Michael, Michael, the archangel, say to uh, Adam, reveal not the secret that thou knowest to Cain thy son, for he is the son of wrath. Okay, then finally Apocalypse uh, 40 verse 4. For he was unburied since the day when Cain his brother slew him. For wicked Cain took great pain to conceal. Remember I talked about that undercover? Him but could not. For the earth would not receive him. For the body sprung up from the earth. And a voice went out of the earth saying. I will not receive a companion body. Until the, uh, until the earth which has taken and fashioned me cometh to me. Then the testimony of Benjamin, Benjamin, 
7 verse 5 because forever those who are like Cain in envy and hatred of brother shall be of brethren shall be punished with the same judgment. So you have a couple of things that are working here. You know, first first it started off what got the ball rolling was disobedience. That's the core. Disobedience. And then after disobedience, anger set in, hatred, looking at his brother, the spirit caused him to envy, you know, that jealousy and stuff set in. And, and he hated his brother for no cause. His brother did what was right, but because his wasn't accepted, now he got a problem with his brother. And I tell you, this spirit still operates today. Okay, let's look a little bit at envy. Okay, um, it can be used in a good sense, zeal, but it can also be used for jealousy. Because uh, remember, you know, our fathers, he's a jealous Elohim, a jealous El. So we have to consider that, that they're, um, from a standpoint, uh, jealousy that's accepted and one that's not. Look at Job or Job 5 verse 2. For wrath killeth the foolish man and envy slayeth the silly one. Um, Proverbs 27 4. Wrath is cruel. Anger is outrageous. But who is able to stand against envy? This fuels the fire for a lot of things. This envious spirit can, can attach. And you'll see people bumping heads. What's there? What's, what's making them bump heads? First, there's got to there's gonna be some disobedience that's operating. Then, then anger and this envy comes in and starts fueling the fire. Proverbs 14:30, a sound heart. Is the life of the flesh, but envy the rottenness of the bones. My goodness. And notice it says envy is the rottenness of the bones. Your bones is the support system. So when envy comes in, your whole support system starts to corrode and collapse. It rots it away. Okay, and I mean... This was good. It includes envy. I, I thought, I said, let me, I'm going to read it anyway. Uh, even though it's got one little thing in there that says full of envy, I, I thought this is real uh, good that for a refresher for us in Romans 121. Because that when they knew Elohim, they esteemed him not as Elohim. So in other words, you know he's Elohim, but you still not obedient to his word. Because if you esteem him as Elohim, you're going to obey his word. If you esteem him as Elohim, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imagination, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Remember that concealment thing? Doing things in the dark. What you do in the dark shall come to the light. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. And change the esteem of the incorruptible Elohim into the image made like to corruptible man, to birds and four footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, of Elohim also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, to change the truth of Elohim into a lie. Okay, so this, this is possible. And worshipped and served the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever. I mean, for this cause Elohim gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the, man, the men, leaving the natural use of women, a woman, burning in their own lust one towards another men with men working that which is unseemly 
and receiving in themselves the recompense of their error, which is me. And even as they did not like to retain Elohim in their knowledge, Elohim gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which were not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of Elohim, despiteful, proud, boasters, uh, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parent, without understanding, truth breakers, without natural affection, complainable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of Elohim, that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Okay, so let's look, look, look at some more envy. Let us, let us walk honestly as in the day. Not in the rioting of drunkenness. So notice it's associating day. Because if you're walking in the light of the word, you don't have to hide things. You don't have to do things undercover. But that's what the enemy does. Always working undercover, working behind the scenes to cause division. Not in chambering or wantonness, not in strife and envy. 1 Corinthians 3.3 3. For ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying, and strife and division are you not carnal and walk as men? Uh, Galatians 5.26 Let us not be desirous of vain esteem of glory. Provoke one another, envying one another. Provoking one another, envying. Of course, okay, then Timothy 3.3 3, For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers lusts and pleasures, living in malice, envy, hateful, hating one another. My goodness. Now, I think this is a very powerful statement by Yacoba James. 3 verse 13. Who is a wise man and endureth with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation, his works with meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envying and strife in your heart, esteem not. So, in other words, this is an acceptable. Lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but it's earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruit, without partiality, without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Okay, now there is a, 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 envy, a, a, a envy that's righteous. Okay, it was Phineas. Phineas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aharon, the priest, has turned my wrath away from the children of Israel. While he was zealous for, now notice he didn't have his own, this word right here is still your word for envy. He was zealous for my envy among them, that I consumed not the children of Israel in my jealousy, but it's still envy. So, if you're operating from his envy perspective, that's righteous. But if you're doing your own, that's wicked. Okay? Now, I gotta, before we pray, I got some other stuff I want to look at or help us to see. 
So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take out, um, well, we'll do curse first. So notice here, after he does this, it says, now thou art cursed from the earth. So you can bring a curse on yourself. And I, I want to show you this. Let's go to Deuteronomy. 27 and we'll drop down to verse 24 but we'll I want to read more of it um, just so I'm gonna take one of these out okay when they were going into the land they had uh, they had some of the tribes stand over on Mount Ebal. Okay, and the Levites shall speak and say unto all the men with a loud voice. Now listen to these. Cursed be the man that maketh any graven or molten image, an abomination unto Yahuwah, the work of hands of the craftsmen, and putteth it in a secret place. And all the people shall answer and say, Amen. So he makes this image, put it in, he hides it. Okay. Some people have their images hid where they're cursed. Okay. Cursed be he that uh, setteth light, or it means dishonor, um, his father. Or mother, or his mother, and all the people shall, shall say, I mean. Cursed be he that moveth his neighbor's landmark, and all the people shall say, I mean. So that's, that's like stealing. Because you would move a landmark to show that you have more land than, than they. And you do that by moving the landmark. Cursed be he that maketh the blind to wander out of the way. And all the people shall say, I mean, cursed be he that perverted justice of the stranger, fatherless, and the widow. And all the people shall say, I mean, cursed be he that lieth with his father's wife, because he uncovereth his father's skirt. And all the people shall say, I mean. Now notice it didn't say, curse is the man uh, that lies with his mother. This is specific, father's wife. So it's someone is it's a wife other than his mother that his father might have. Cursed be he that lieth with any manner of beast, and all the people shall say I mean. Cursed be he that lieth with his sister, the daughter of his father, the daughter of his mother, and all the people shall say I mean. Cursed be he that lieth with his mother-in-law, and all the people shall say, Amen. Now here's one. Here's the one we're talking about. That, that a lot of people are cursed and don't even know it. Verse 24. Cursed be he that smiteth his neighbors, his neighbors secretly. Okay. Let's look at that. To strike lightly or severely, literally or figuratively. So you can smite somebody with your hand, but you can smite them with your words too. You're cursed if you're doing it. Secretly. Hidden. Undercover. All the people shall say, I mean. Cursed be he that taketh reward to slay your innocent person. All the people shall say, I mean. Cursed be he that com who com uh, cursed be he that confirmeth not all the words of this law or Torah to do them, and all the people shall say, Amen. Confirm. Now notice here is kum to rise or stand. You can't now you can't just stand for some of the words. You, it's got to be all. Okay. Then one other interesting 
note I had. And I think this is how this works. Okay, it's supposed to be 44, sorry. Okay, talking about evil spirits, spirits, what happens? Okay, now notice that once Cain allowed these things to happen, he became a wanderer. Okay, and one of the words meant to and fro. Okay, now I want you to look at the characteristic. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places. So also Nod was an indication of a desert too. Seeking rest and findeth none. So he's seeking rest. He's wandering. Find it. For a wanderer, never that's what keeps them wandering. They never find rest. And when he said, I will return to my house from whence I came. And when he cometh, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. And then he goeth in and taketh himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. So, I mean, you see these characteristics. Look at how Cain got progressively worse and worse. There's so many spirits that can be in, be in operation. Okay, and I'm going I'm to just share with you a little pattern, some of the patterns. Now, keep in mind, this is what I've noticed. When you have a spirit of disobedience, it's, you saw that the anger and the envy came. There's also, you see, a spirit of uh, confusion. When a spirit of confusion is in operation, it leads to disobedience. So. If it can't get you to be disobedient right out the, right out the gate, then a spirit of confusion try to come on people. And they struggle to try to get an understanding. And instead of just uh, operating, you know, in belief, if it says something, just believe it. The understanding will come as you walk this thing out. And when they, when they can't get the understanding right away, now a spirit of confusion sets in. Well, that can't be true and it can't be this and blah, blah, blah. But what's really working is a spirit of confusion. And then when that spirit of confusion starts working, now the door is open. It invites in disobedience. It invites in anger. It invites in envy. Then uh, next thing you know, you got, you got um, murder. And you got all these other things that can start coming in. So it opens the door. Okay. And even a spirit of error that works. And usually with the spirit of error, when people are in error and don't want to get corrected, a spirit of offense come. And once they are offended, you know what it says, hard to win someone is uh, offended. Hard to win. So that's where this, that spirit is trying to take them to, where they're offended to the point that they can't be won back by the word. So it's, it's a, uh, a, a path that locks the word of Elohim out of someone's life. But it starts with a spirit of error. And then when they don't want to receive correction, a spirit of offense comes. And then from that spirit of offense, they're, they're locked out from the word of Elohim because they don't want, they're offended now. So nothing you do can bring them back. <clears throat> and so these spirits that are working, 
I'm trying to tell you. Uh, it is is something else, and they definitely are working overtime today amongst our people. People do not want correction. They want everything sugar-coated. You know, but the, the whole reality is if, if you don't, if you're not willing to receive correction, then offense comes. And the spirit of offense is going to isolate you. And its ultimate purpose is to isolate you from from the um, the word of Elohim that light and it's working overtime I see it at work and I'm like man so but I want want to show you that I'm, I'm not just blowing smoke so let's Let's just look at Proverbs. This will be the last thing we look at. 18 verse 19. Look at this. A brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city. And their contention is like the bars of a castle. Or if you want the ESV, a brother offended is more unyielding than a strong city. And quarreling is like the bars of a castle. So the spirit of offense is trying to take them to a place that they can't be won back. So just know I'm wondering, uh, I've warned you. You got to humble yourself. Because everybody's, everybody's offended. Every place you turn, offended at this. And with a Mashiach, he offended folks. Some of his sayings were hard for people. And they couldn't receive them. Some people turned back. The, the bottom line is, do you want this walk or not? He said, blessed are those that are not offended in me. So, this is going to take some humility. This is a, a walk of humility. And you've got to be willing to humble yourself. Because if you don't, the spirit of pride will rise up. And you know what Yahuwah says about pride. Pride is, it, hey, once pride set in, oh man. That's one rough spirit. All right, Miss Buka, let's go back over here. Me make sure we don't have any comments I need to address because I, I know that uh, I, I mean I'm seeing this stuff firsthand at work battling the enemy and and just learning the ins and outs and this is like OJT and these spirits are at operation even more now because they know their time is close. Okay, uh, Nicole, Nicole asks, how can you get deliverance that you will receive correction and deliverance from offense? How do you humble yourself? Well, the, let's, let's talk humble. Because what happens when, when a person has a, a spirit of humility, First of all, they're going to operate according to the word of Elohim. And when they hear what they have to do to correct something, they don't let anything stand in their way to get it corrected. So in other words, if they did, did their brother wrong, whether they did it knowingly or unknowingly, and the word pricks their heart, which it should, because if you're humble, it should prick your heart. 
they get it right. They they go and get their situation resolved. Whereas a person that's prideful, they will never see where they did anything wrong in a situation. They will always think it's the other person. And so from there, they become offended because they can't own up to what their part, what they did in the situation. So it's almost like the, the adults used to say, you got to swallow your pride. Look at, look at Moshe, one of the meekest, the father's, one of the meekest men here on earth. When he, when, you know, just pattern out his life, how humble he was. And how he, um, you know, always was standing in the gap for the people. You know, did he have fault? Did he do something that kept him out? Yeah, of course he did. We know that's written. But you can't let these things rise up in you. It's better to take the humble road and make sure you are straight. Because when correction comes, just like David. Look at all this. Look at what he did in the dark. Did, took, took a man's wife, murdered the man. All by his hand. Because his words did it. He gave the order. Thought it was all right. Everything was good. Then the word of Elohim came to him through the prophet. The prophet told him. Gave him a parable. When he told him. That was him. Everything that he was trying to hide uncovered. And he confessed that it was him. And he repented, was sorrowful. Didn't mean judgment didn't come because judgment still had to come. But his actions spoke loud. So we can't let these spirits attached to us first and foremost spirit of disobedience and even before that spirit of confusion for some of us if you don't understand something you study you pray and you wait Don't try to get your understanding. I've seen so many people do that. They, they, they want understanding so bad that they're going to go out here and, and, and um, basically forge understanding instead of waiting. Waiting for understanding this wisdom to reveal itself. And that's one of the things we lack sometimes. We jump ship so quick before we get an understanding. We won't, we won't wait for it. We want it now. It's almost like we're demanding it now. There's nothing wrong with wanting it. But when it doesn't come, are you willing to wait for it? And are you willing to wait patiently? And if, if you want a little bit more in depth, you can, you can email me at info at living-branch.org. I'll be... Happy to uh, help you if you have a particular situation. Because I know it's, it's hard navigating these days. Yeah, we're up against so much. And those people that are sincere, you know, I'm here to help. But then we have what we call, what I call time wasters. Those people, they talk, 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 talk. But you never see any action, 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 action. Those are what I call time wasters. Uh, I don't want to hear all the talk. I want to see some action.
Yeah, that's that's a pre um that's a uh, process. Selena, um, as far as patients with family members, sometimes you have to wait because I want you to think about this. There, there are four seasons, or well, really in Israel there are two seasons, but for our example, we use four. So you have a season for planting, the rainy season, then you have a season for harvest. So, when, once you plant, you got to know when to plant. Not everyone is ready to receive. We, sometimes we want to try to throw, the, give it, throw it on everyone we see. But what, what I'm trying to do when I talk to people, I'm trying to discern where the person is. And if they're ready to receive a seed. Because... If they're not, then that seed goes to waste. It's just like the parable of the sower. So as a, as a um, one that goes out and I've farmed before, you have to know when to plant the seed. And then once you plant it, you wait. Some of, some of us get impatient. You have to let one plant, one waters, then you let Elohim get give the increase. So as far as like for me and my family, my family knows what I believe. Um, that way they don't cross certain boundaries, you know, uh, as far as, you know, Shabbat and certain things and what I eat. But I, I don't force nothing on them. Um, I try to live it before them. And... Hopefully they'll see it and ask, you know, if, if they ask me, I share, but I, you know, I'm trying to, trying to be very discerning in my sharing because sometimes you can push people away more, more than you're drawing them, you know, just pounding on them. So, and this requires wisdom. He that wins souls must be wise. So there again... You know, if you want to email me for, you know, more personal stuff, just uh, info at living-branch.org. Because remember, not everybody's going to receive this. We're searching for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He said, my sheep hear my voice. So you've got to be in tune to recognize the signs and see it. And though we would want everybody to receive it, it's not going to happen. And we know that through reading scripture. Even some of our folks that are saying they're in the wall, they haven't received everything. Some things they've rejected. So it requires a tremendous amount of discernment, patience, and, you know, willing to learn. When I say willing to learn, you know, when you're when you're new and zeal when you when you're new to the walk and you're zealous, you want everybody to know. But once once you've accumulated some wisdom and <clears throat> seen how people react, then you start to approach people with wisdom to see whether they're receptive. All righty, Ms. Bacall, let's pray. See, my session's been going a little longer here lately. Father, I pray for my Ms. Bacall. I know it's difficult times, and the times we're in, we just ask you to give us a discerning spirit. Help us, Father, to only operate in the Ruach HaKadosh of Yahuwah Elohim, which will only confirm your Torah and your instructions, your statutes. It confirms it is a witness, and I thank you that you will be a witness in us. Now, Father, help our people. Help those both near and far, those that are really seeking your heart. I pray that you be with them. Help us to be humble. 
Show us the way. Father, we give you praise, honor, and esteem. I thank you, Father. I just felt someone has transformed their thinking this day. I thank you for that. Because they were looking through their own lenses. But now they're seeing it through the eye. Your eyes. The eyes of the scripture. Thank you, Father, for helping them to see like you see. I give you praise, honor, and esteem. In the name of Messiah, Yahusha. Hallel to Yahuwah. Amen. All right, Ms. Bukah. Of course, uh, we still have our program there online. If you want to go and practice your Hebrew, uh, biblical Hebrew, it's a great, great tool. And also, we still, you know, have our bookstore, our, um, what do we call our resource center, where you can find things. This is a good copy of the Dead Sea Scrolls you can get. Pop over there if you don't have a Dead Sea Scrolls. It's a good, cons good comparison also um, <clears throat> with the Dead Sea Scrolls, the Septuagint. It's definitely something you want to add to your library if you don't have it. And we also have a um, series of books to help teach our children. They look at them and learn and you discuss the pictures. And we do that also for the, uh, for the Passover. Yeah, I wonder why it's interesting. So make sure you get a copy for your library, the Hebrew Passover story. It's available in paper edition and Kindle. Join our bookmarker witnessing team. I've sent out bookmarkers um, a couple weeks back. We sent out, uh, I think, close a little over 1,500 bookmarkers to those that have partnered with us and those that are, you know, just going out witnessing, uh, passing out bookmarkers. And if you would like to, you know, send a donation or be a blessing, you can do several ways. We have, uh, you can do it by mail. Uh, you can do it by Cash App. Do it by PayPal. And you can even use our online giving tool, which will bring you here. You can um, do your giving. It'll schedule your giving. You can do it auto and don't even have to remember it. So, you know... And one good thing, most of you that I'm seeing, you all are on Living Branch. So it's real easy for you all to connect and, you know, share and help build one another up. All right, Ms. Bacah, what corrupt spirit is operating? I hope this lesson has been a blessing to you. Remember to tune in this evening at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time um, to the Path to Yahuwah. For that lesson, very good lessons. And also, if you are in the area and would like to fellowship at that 4 p.m. Uh, Eastern Ten Standard Time, it's on our website, the address. So you can drop in and fellowship with us, Living Branch and Path to Yahuwah. Right, Ms. Bakai, love you. And 